we were the winner of last year's competition, about over 100 startups, for the Innovation of Things Award winner. And the Innovation of Things isn't just for the most innovative company, it's uh, the, judged by the panel of investors as the most valued. And for that reason, IoT World said, come and talk to who might be potential presenters in the competition that I'll be judging, helping judge over the next couple of days on how you create value for investors. So that's the focus of this uh, presentation. What I'll be doing is using a combination of slides. I also help teach entrepreneurship. I've done lectures at Stanford University, University of British Columbia on go-to-market strategy and actually creating value. So I'll use some of those slides and then integrate in the district slides on you know, how and why we won and what we've been doing since for some real life examples. So a little bit about us. Uh, we were actually uh, created out of a DARPA initiative by the Department of Defense to very securely and reliably connect up complex sensor networks that are in the operational in the battlefield. So for example, we've been deployed as the SCADA control network overlay to Department of Defense smart grid that don't use IP technology. These were built in the time of the Cold War, Ronald Reagan era, uh, underground, can't see them in space, and they use protocols like Modbus and Lawnworks. And how do you create highly resilient networks using those types of protocols? That's our background. And what we realized a little over a year ago is that we can apply that exact same technology to the needs, to meet the needs of connectivity and reliability for the industrial internet of things. So we are now engaging in deployments in manufacturing, oil and gas, wastewater, uh, clean energy, uh, to really solve the exact same problems. So to the startups that are in the room that are competing or to the investors, this is about how we create value for investors. And this is a simple slide, but it is from Stanford with smart people, so there's a lot of depth to this. But really what investors are looking for are three very common things. For you guys that are competing tomorrow, it's about team, it's about technology and the competitive gap that you can sustain and the market need. Are you really fulfilling a need? Now all three of these matter. One matters the most. Now we're in Silicon Valley, so you can put in your head what you think that is. Um, but actually, I'm misleading you because the real answer is team. Because you can have a strategy, you can have technology, you can have a competitive gap, but things will pivot. The market will always change. Disruptive markets, including IoT, will always flip it. And you have to have a smart enough team to do it. You also, and I tell this, this is the very first slide I put up in any of the lectures, you have to be honest with yourself because there's an audacity to founders. There's an audacity to startups. I can do this better than Google. I can do this better than Cisco or G or somebody else but they can't confuse audacity with arrogance. A lot of times founders think they know it all and that's what actually kills them. They need to be smart about their own capabilities and put a team around them that actually complements their strengths and weaknesses. That's the most important part. But let me talk about gap. Let me talk about this sustainable gap. I'm gonna use actually Jeffrey Moore. He's a bit old school, but I use him in the lectures because it still applies today. And this is in the IoT world, and it doesn't matter which vertical, there's these huge gaps, and it's often not technology. It's often cultural, or behavioral, or regulatory, that stops somebody from having a great idea with one or two customers and crossing over. You see the bowling alley, that's actually an important component I'll talk about later, um, that Jeffrey Moore points up. But how do you actually cross that chasm? And in every industry in IoT, these new disruptives, there's huge chasms. So let me talk about the one that's in our space, which is the industrial internet. And this is, I think, why we won. Because we understood these and have solved these and are solving them now with the partners that we're going to market with. Here in the Valley, this IoT world, the largest you know, event of its kind in the world, everyone's excited about GE saying $15 trillion. And, and Cisco, you know, right behind at 14.4, and they've all upped the ante since then. Even the analysts, 15, 11 trillion, McKinsey. They're thinking about how they actually start to generate new revenues to business with big data or equipment vendors wanting to do new services, right? Service providers, ooh, 50 billion devices. I need every one of them to be on my network. That's all about the trillions of dollars you can make. But on the industrial customer side, and we call it OT, they don't call themselves OT. Valley calls them OT to differentiate IT from operational technology. It's a bit pejorative, but it's actually just operations. But we'll just use OT. They're about reducing costs. They're about extending the life of their equipment. They're about improved performance. So one culture, one group is about making money. The other one is about saving money. And that just starts the gap. This gap, we call the ITOT divide. And you might actually read about the different divides there. It's, this is the chasm. It's as wide as the Grand Canyon. It's what's actually preventing Silicon Valley from being successful and really expanding to the industrial side. 
there's things like, and I already mentioned it, the cost of upgrading to the internet. In the Valley, you know, Cisco's answer is, the answer is IP, what was the question? Right? It's the internet protocol. Well, if you're going to do IoT, the internet of things, you need the internet protocol. The, the problem on the factory floor is that 90% of their stuff isn't IP based. It's 15, 20 years old and it's going to work for another 15, 20 years and it works on Modbus and Profibus and Lawnworks, like the stuff I mentioned for the DoD. That's what it is. And just to upgrade costs millions of dollars. The irony here is that the whole point of the industrial internet of things is to extend the life of existing equipment, but you've got to buy new equipment before you can do that. That's a gap. Here's another chasm is the security. These are isolated systems. The only way you access them is by standing in front of them. That's security just by isolation. And to them, security also means safety, life and death safety. Right? These are the things that industrial people care about. IT cares about something slightly different. And they're saying, that's fine, GRE tunnels to go deep inside, deep inside, deep is tunnels inside tunnels and tunnels. It not only opens these customers up to the internet and all the attacks that come from it, but actually makes it complex for them to do anything. It's a bit of a non-starter. And then finally, the biggest chasm of all is the cultural gap. I know a lot of people running the factory floors, and whenever an IT person comes in, say, get off my floor. Right? So these are real life issues. And the way you actually cross that chasm, I'm, I'm moving over to the, 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 the value side, the need side, because these are all related. The way these startups focus on solving that problem and crossing that chasm is starting, it's the bowling alley, it's starting with the head pin. There's a lot of things that can be done. And when I joined this company, there was a dozen things it could do because of all the technology it did for the DoD. But you had to start somewhere. You had to have that, that foot in the ground, and that's the head pin. Because if you want to knock down all the other pins, you don't hit the seven pin or the 10 pin. You hit the head pin. And you've got to identify that and then grow. That's what we had to do. That was the work that we did last year that actually also helped us win. Because we said, the problem that we're solving out the gates is secure, reliable connectivity, but using your existing equipment. Don't upgrade to IP, use whatever you've got and make it highly secure and simple. This is a showstopper for a lot of customers and we're now enabling that. But this is our head pin. That's not where we're going. The blue sky starts to go in stages. The next pins are all the advanced capabilities that we've already been deploying for years, but it's too confusing for the industrial. Take data, put it wherever you want, add value to it, make decisions. These edge controls that people are starting to talk about, we've been doing for years. But here's the thing. There's actually a step beyond that. Everyone talks about the IoT cloud. Everyone talks about the edge. And that's fantastic. GE predicts people are saying, ooh, you got to make the decisions at the edge. But if you're going to have 50 billion devices, you can't just have it at the middle and at the edge. You need it everywhere in between. You need smart networks. You need the network to be the PLC, the programmable logic controller. Not a device at the edge, but everywhere. This is where we're going. But we got to start somewhere, and that's the head pin. So these are important concepts in creating value for investors. What we did was we researched, I won't go too much into this, but the research from over 400 industrial customers in the US and Europe confirmed it. 78% of them said they're now gonna spend big money on IoT. Up until now it's just been, what's IoT? Can't even spell that on the factory floor. They now have big budgets, but the issue is half of them say, I gotta do a rip and replace because Silicon Valley told me so. And I'm worried about security. The problem is, as a startup, you don't sell to the, those people. They, they have equipment that they bought 30 years ago and they want it to work for 30 years more. They're not buying from a startup. It's not Bank of America that has a whole startup program and works with Silicon Valley. These are industrial customers. You actually needed somebody who's already on the factory floor, who already has the ear of the customer. Well, there's another headache that's being solved in this head pin, and that's the headache of the industrial control people that are already there. These hardware providers that already have the routing, they make billions, putting their stuff on the factory floor. They've got an issue too, because their product management talked to these industrial customers. And their industrial customers said, I'm not buying IoT, I don't have a plan for this. So their roadmap had no IoT in it. In fact, the second bullet, 76% of vendors said they spent less than 2% of R&D on actually enabling IoT technologies, because their customers said, I'm not buying next year. Now all of a sudden, 78% said they are, the window's there and they went, holy crap. They're all scrambling. So this is what our head pin and bowling alley looks like, actually from left to right. We start by putting our software on the hardware that's already on the factory floor, on that left-hand side in the industrial factory floor. We don't worry about Silicon Valley right now trying to cross that chasm. We're starting it on the left-hand side. We're starting on the other side of the chasm. And we're making relationships with the people that are already there. And it's only a $4 billion, sorry, it's not $15 trillion. For them, it's just $4 billion. 
but our software goes right inside theirs, and that's our pitch. We can embed your software right on your existing equipment, and your roadmap can be today, not in two years. They realize, my goodness, you have connectivity to the brownfield stuff. You have connectivity to the industrial net. Then the head pin can go off to all the big data stuff and all the Silicon Valley stuff that the IP folks want. But that will be next, right? That's the biggest opportunity, but we're bridging the gap from the other side. 